it, first of all, is it true that that officers frequently escape any sanctions or censure for the use of deadly force when it perhaps is not necessary? And oh, secondly, absolutely. why hasn't it changed? Very simple in two dimensions. In the first instance, very few of these killings are situations in which all of the fault is on the individual officer. And that becomes absolutely important because if you're talking about the criminal responsibility of the individual officer, it was all his fault. That is a small minority of all the cases and a small minority of the unnecessary killings. Why is that? That is because the standards that justify the use of deadly force that departments utilize in making evaluations are ambiguous and cover an awful lot of settings where police lives aren't at risk. There are knives. There are baseball bats. Uh, uh, there are intensely felt personal force assaults that don't kill police officers, but that do create justification. So what that means, that if you really want to prevent the 400 at least killings a year that are unnecessary, you're going to have to find a way to sanction and prevent the killings which are the joint responsibility of systems of police, the police chief, the administrative rules, and police officers. And, and, the, way, and the way you can do that is with big money damages. If it is the system and the officer who are jointly at fault, they should be jointly sanctioned.